In today's video, I wanted to go through four of the biggest photography regrets that I've got from over the years. And while not exactly the cheeriest of topic, a younger version of me would have definitely appreciated hearing something like this. So hopefully it helps someone else out there too. Okay, so on to my first and probably biggest regret of photography over the years. And uh, I guess if you're watching this video, you're already doing better than I did back in the day because you're on YouTube actively looking at YouTube videos for inspiration and tips. Basically, my biggest regret was not exploring any more than camera settings. So to give you a bit of a backstory, when I first picked up a DSLR camera, I learned the exposure triangle, how to use manual mode, and then that was pretty much it. I went around for years knowing that I knew how to use a camera manually and I thought that was enough. Now, of course, knowing how to use a camera manually is a great start and everybody should learn that, right? But my problem was I didn't dive into any famous photographer's work. I didn't really dive that much into any other photographer's work. I didn't look much into the philosophy of why people do photography and think about why I did photography. I didn't explore light, shadow, textures, details, or anything like that. I wasn't even watching other photographers on YouTube, which is pretty shocking given that you can probably learn more on YouTube than you can from going to university. Now, granted, I did get slightly better over time because after all, the best way to get better at photography is obviously to go and take photos and being quite a hands-on visual person anyway with a bit of a background in graphic design and stuff like that. I did slowly get better, but I now know that if I combined, combined, <laughs> if I had a combination of them both, of actually researching and diving into more than just manual settings on a camera while also knowing manual settings on a camera and going out and taking loads of photos. I would have got so much better, so much faster and developed more of a style as well, rather than just going around and essentially taking photos in manual mode. So if that does sound a little bit about you, don't worry, don't worry, I'm not putting shade on anybody, but maybe dive into the work of the greats, explore visual patterns, color theory. We could go on and on and on about all the things you can dive into, but just make sure you're not just running around taking photos with the knowledge of how to use a camera in manual mode and not really thinking deeper about why it is you're taking that photo, why you framed it that way, or using any sort of outside factors that aren't just based around the camera itself. And I really wanted to include this path in this shot, but it's leading around that way, around the corner. So if I shoot this side angle, which I really like, this path goes off around that way, which just takes your eye basically out of the frame, which is not what you want. So I'm maybe just gonna start with a, with a shot that literally has no real foreground interest. Let's just get this for a reference shot, just in case I get nothing today. So I always like to take an image to remember, to stick in a remember folder. By the way, if I'm ever covered in blonde hair in videos, you know exactly why. Come on, bud, let's go. Don't mind including, does this work? Sit down, good boy. So as I was saying, I'm just including a bit of this path in the front, but it's not exactly you know, it's not big enough or leading anywhere in the frame. It's still technically leading out the frame, but it's more of a, more of just a bit of texture in the foreground. I came to lean on this fence, but there's barbed wire on it. <laughs> So what's my second biggest regret then? And I realize as I'm making this video now that regret's a bit of a strong word. They're all just learning points, aren't they really? But basically shortly after getting my first camera, my first DSLR, I invested in a 10 stop ND filter. And when I say invested, it was probably about 10 or 20 pound off Amazon and was terrible. But basically I started seeing long exposure photography online on Instagram and stuff like that. And I thought it was really, really cool. And it was also very, very popular at the time. Now taking long exposure photography, seascapes to be exact, of course, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I still do it now, 
But what the problem was, what I regret, is what came after I bought that 10 stop ND filter and started taking long exposure seascapes. I became tunnel visioned by those lovely, beautiful, ghostly long exposure seascapes and basically started to think that any other form of photography was a bit pointless, which not only is just a bit of a silly, naive attitude to have, isn't it? I also lived in the East Midlands of England at the time, which has no coastline because it's in the middle of the country. Therefore, what was I doing in between not taking long exposure seascapes? I was not using my camera for a long period of time. I'd wait for a trip or like a family holiday or something, and then I'd go on that and then I would take like a hundred long exposure photographs because I thought that was the only photography that made any sense. Also, nice bit of mud there from not falling over, believe it or not. So to be absolutely clear, just in case anyone's getting the wrong idea, I know I've already said this, but the long exposure seascapes that I were taking were not the problem. The problem was that I was dismissing any other type of photography, thinking it was pointless and boring. Even other photographers that were taking great photos that weren't long exposure seascapes, I would think boring. So I guess the main takeaway, the main tip for this regret that I have is uh, not dismissing all photography and thinking that there's only one that you should be doing. Of course you can focus on one, but that doesn't mean you have to have the mindset that all of the photography is pointless, especially, especially if it is what, like resulting in you not using your camera much. I had an interaction with someone once, and this is maybe going off topic a little bit, but they said, what type of photography do you do? And I said, eh, all sorts, mostly landscapey stuff. And they said, eh, not for me and they didn't want to have a conversation with me because it wasn't the type of photography that they liked. And this might just be me being open to all photography, but I thought that was the most stupid thing ever. Because if you're a photographer, if you're an artist, for me, really, you should be kind of interested in it all. You know, if I see car photography, for example, doesn't really you know, I wouldn't do it, it doesn't really interest me. But if a photographer, an amazing photographer was showing off their car photography, I'd look at it because it's photography, it's interesting. You can still admire it regardless of the genre. Now, you don't need to go on an epic photography trip to take good photos. I say that all the time on my channel, but one of my regrets is definitely spending loads of money on pointless stuff instead of investing in photography trips. I won't go too far into the nitty and gritty of what I would spend money on, but I definitely wasted a lot of money on like getting the new iPhone every single year and lenses and stuff that I didn't really need, even like little bits and bobs of gear that didn't really actually make a difference to my photography process. And because I wasn't spending the money on going on trips to take photos, it was kind of pointless having them in my possession anyway, which is kind of hilarious because obviously I spoke last about how I wanted to do long exposure photography, regardless of whether the whole dismissing of the photography thing was a problem. I did want to do long exposure seascape photography. So instead of spending money on stupid items that I didn't really need, I could have been investing on going on photography trips and actually going to incredible long exposure locations all the time and then at least I would have been using my camera. Obviously photography gear is great, we all love it right, but if you're not going to go anywhere with it then what's the flipping point of having it in the first place? You're better off having a really small kit and going to take photos in lots of great places, even if it's like petrol money to get around the country that you're already in is just a much better investment in my eyes anyway. Obviously if you get to the point where you're you can't complain about money, then you can do both. But for a lot of people, that's not really the case, is it? Now, obviously everyone's financial situation is very different, but if you relate to this in any way, then maybe next time before you make a big gear purchase or even a little gear purchase, just ask yourself, do I really need this? Could I spend this money on driving to a location, going on a little road trip, an Airbnb to stay in a place overnight, which means you can get more photos, spend more time there. And I guess most importantly, would making that purchase mean that you come back from a trip with amazing photos that you couldn't get otherwise? Most of the time, the answer is probably going to be no. Obviously, if you don't have a lens for your camera, then 
probably buy a lens before you go on a photo trip. It's a, a process of elimination. Which one's more important, going on a trip to take photos or having a new lens? Hello! Don't know if you can hear me up here. Super, super windy. I'm also not the fondest of heights, if I'm completely honest. So, probably gonna get down. Lupin just spotted there's a dude on top of there. Okay, my last regret, that I, well, it's not my last regret, I've got many regrets, but the last one and the fourth one for this video was basically thinking that gear that the people that I looked up to, the photographers that I looked up to, even like YouTubers, vloggers and stuff like that, the gear that they used, I thought that that was the gear that I needed, which I think most people are pretty conscious now that that's not really the case. I think everyone's opened their eyes a little bit more to the fact that gear has to work for you it doesn't do the work for you, it has to work for you. It has to feel right in the hand, it has to operate properly, weight can come into play. There's so many factors to whether a gear fits your style of shooting. And of course, whether you need photo, video, both, whatever it may be, it has to work for you. Whereas when I was younger, a little bit more naive, shall we say, I purchased one of my first lenses for my first mirrorless camera simply because it was what all the famous vloggers were using at the time and fantastic lens don't get me wrong but it wasn't really right for the photography that i was doing now the same way just because my setup that i use consists of two full frame sony cameras and they're both mirrorless cameras that doesn't mean it's going to be right for you if you like my photos and my videos that doesn't mean my cameras are right for you i will speak highly of them and i'll you know recommend them to people that might have similar needs to me but it doesn't mean that if you purchase them they're going to be right for you you have to do your research and you have to look into the pros and cons of the cameras and the gear and the lenses and anything, tripods that you're buying because you don't want to purchase it and then regret your purchase, which is what I did a lot of the time. So basically this one sprung into my mind mainly because of obviously the power of YouTube these days and the power of social media when it comes to promoting gear and all creators are promoting something regardless of whether it's actually sponsored because they're using it and they're talking about it. So they're promoting it without even knowing they're promoting it. But just be mindful if you are maybe for the younger demographic as well that don't quite know yet um, they haven't quite got fair enough into photography to know that just because your favorite creator is using that item it doesn't mean it's going to get you one the same results as them if you want to get similar work to them and two you might hate it so just be aware of that all right guys thank you so much for watching that's going to wrap up this one i hope you found it helpful and one of my regrets hopefully helps you not make the same mistakes as me. But anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next one.